I went on a quest to spend the least amount of money for a powerful PC, and while it did take several months, my patience was rewarded. This beautiful PC right here cost me less than $500, and it will run laps around any pre-built or custom PC in that price range, and it even has ray tracing. The only problem? You probably can't replicate it. Let's get into that. This PC build started all the way back four months ago when I took on the challenge of building the best PC I can for less than $500 by being smart with my money and keeping an eagle eye out for great discounts. I'm sure you're already thinking, well, you just found some crazy guy on Facebook trying to offload his old mining rig and you got an insane deal. That's actually not the case. Out of this entire PC, the only thing used is the graphics card. Everything else was purchased new from retail stores, but I'll get into that more. Choosing a CPU is always difficult for this price range. I always want to gravitate towards something like the i3-10100, even something newer like the 12-100F. And while those are some great CPUs in their price range, I wanted something a little more powerful, maybe more cores. And I finally found my white whale. That's a, that's a Moby Dick reference for all my Zoomers out there. Many of you are familiar with Micro Center. It's a consumer electronics retail shop that only has like 30 stores in the States, but luckily one of them is in my city, so I'm always on the lookout for those crazy discounts you see online. About a month ago, Micro Center had a deal that only lasted a day or two, but it was on the Ryzen 5 3600, which is a very popular processor, and even when not on sale, has some amazing performance for the cost. The 3600 has six cores, 12 threads, it can be overclocked, and has a pretty great cooler included in the package. But we can't stop there. We need a motherboard. The tried and true budget AM4 motherboard that I've used in the past is the Gigabyte DS3H. Four RAM slots, good VRM heat sinks, always affordable B450 chipset. Just an absolute solid motherboard for almost any build, especially at this price range. I even got the Wi-Fi variant, which usually runs a little bit more expensive, but can be a really great convenience. The deal Micro Center had was a combo that included this CPU and motherboard together for $99. An absolute out of this world deal considering the CPU and alone usually cost about $130 by itself. You're basically getting a big discount on a processor and then a free motherboard thrown in. And these aren't hand-me-down free parts from your uncle. These are brand new with warranty and everything. But I didn't stop there. I was able to use a coupon that gives $25 off any CPU in the store, bringing my total cost of the CPU, cooler, and motherboard to just $75. Now, I don't expect anyone watching to be able to replicate this, as the deal is long since over. But hopefully you can take these ideas and keep an eye out for good deals and be ready to pounce when you can. For storage, I usually just choose the cheapest 512GB NVMe SSD I can find on Amazon from a reputable brand, and they'll usually run you around $40. But luckily I was able to find another great deal that lasted literally one hour. The Kingston 1TB NV2 is not the greatest Gen 4 SSD out there, but it's a solid storage choice and one terabyte is more than enough space for most people to get started on their gaming PC. Normally, this SSD will run you around $70, but Walmart had these drives on their website shipped and sold by them for only $29. You better believe I bought four. I don't know if this was a price error or an intentionally short sale, but within an hour, the price of the drives had gone back to normal. Sometimes when stores put the wrong price on an item, they'll just cancel any orders that were able to go through. But luckily, the order shipped and the drives arrived two days later. A fantastic price on a good drive and will let us have double the storage in this budget build. Ryzen CPUs really benefit from having higher speed RAM, so I wanted to get something that had at least 3600, but I also really wanted some RGB to make the inside of the case pop since the stock CPU cooler we chose doesn't have any RGB on it. Oloy makes this RGB RAM that I really like because it can always be found on sale somewhere, and I've never had any issues with it in the past. RAM is one of those things that isn't worth buying used because people usually just sell it for basically the same price, so buying new will be just fine. I wasn't able to get a good deal on 3600, so I had to settle for 3200. But after looking at some benchmarks online, we're only losing about 1 to 5 FPS, and that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. The RGB on the RAM will give us all the free FPS we need. I hate shopping for power supplies lately. I don't know if there is a shortage or if it's just because of the increase in shipping costs. But power supplies almost never have good deals on them anymore, especially in the extreme budget category. If you're building a similar build, spend a little more and get a good power supply somewhere in the C or B tier on the PSU tier list, but I was kind of in a rush and I had to buy whatever I could with quick shipping from Amazon. These Thermaltake smart power supplies are super readily available on Amazon in every wattage, and while they are very firmly in the D tier on the PSU tier list, 
I've used literally dozens of them at this point over the years and have never had any bad experience with them so far. So if you're gonna use a 3080 and a 13700K in your build, yeah, get a, get a better power supply. But times is tough and, and we in a recession, so this 600 watt power supply for $30 is what we're using. This case was 50 bucks from Micro Center, which isn't the cheapest case available, but I really like this Montec X1 because it has good airflow and it comes included with four RGB fans, although they are Molex powered, so you can't really change off the, the rainbow puke, but that's, uh, that's fine. For 50 bucks, I love the white look of this case and the ample room for any expansion. When looking for budget cases, you'll often find that it's the ATX cases that are always on mega sale, but the micro ATX motherboards that are the cheapest, so don't be too picky on case size if you're trying to save a buck. You can always reuse the case if you ever do end up changing to an ATX motherboard, or maybe even do something like water cooling in the future. Since I was able to get a stronger CPU like the Ryzen 5 3600, I wanted a more modern graphics card, but I'm not really a fan of the 2000 series from Nvidia, and I didn't want to go to AMD for this build. So luckily, I found a great deal on an RTX 3060. This card is an absolute beast when it comes to price to performance. And while I don't think anyone will be using ray tracing realistically, it also comes with the other great NVIDIA features like DLSS and RTX Voice. The 1080p performance is fantastic, and we can even get into some adequate 1440p gaming. That's pretty exciting for a PC build this low budget. I picked up the GPU on r slash hardware swap for $240 shipped to my door, from a friendly seller who upgraded his personal rig recently. For the final touches, we're skipping the stupid Funko Pop this time, so I went ahead and picked up some cheap cable extensions on Amazon. I usually don't buy these, but if you get a cheap power supply, they usually come with ugly ketchup and mustard cables. So if you don't like the look of that, these cable extensions are a cheap way to change the look of your rig on the fly. I just usually get black or white though, but there is an absolute never ending amount of colors and configurations you can get these in. Okay, everything's all built and I gotta admit, for a PC that costs less than $500, it actually looks pretty good. The rainbow RGB isn't as obnoxious as I was expecting, and this white Montec case is actually looking really clean. Let's check out that B-roll and then get to gaming. I've got Windows 10 Pro installed. I've got all the drivers updated. I've got all the Windows updates done. Finally, I've got my XMP profile configured. Everything's good to go. I think we need to finally start gaming on this. The first game I always like to try is Ghost Runner. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with Ghost Runner, Ghost Runner is actually a really good single player game. Uh, it doesn't cost too much. It's like $15, I think. It's always on sale. It came out a few years ago and it is just a really beautiful game that is very well optimized so even like the cheapest of pieces can play it but if you do have a good pc it looks fantastic let me check our settings here as you can see i have it on 1080p everything at high or epic i mean this is pretty much as high as it goes at this resolution vsync off got the fps count on the top left you can see we are hovering around uh, 170 to 200, it's kind of all over the place right now. I think it gets better once I get uh, closer to enemies. We're hovering around 180 to 200, it's pretty good. Uh, and that's on everything at epic, like high, epic. I don't think I changed a single thing. Uh, everything's almost as high as it can go at 1080p resolution. And we are, yeah, we're hovering around the 180 mark, which is very good for this configuration, really. I mean, it's a very cheap PC. We're able to get, look at that, 200 FPS just going through this puzzle. It's pretty good. I just want to run the benchmark on this one um, because that's me running around the starting area it isn't a really good isn't really a good display of what's possible in this game. Let's do high. No, you know what? Let's do ultra 1080p, but no ray tracing. And let's turn film grain because everyone hates that. Let's turn motion blur off because that is the worst thing ever. All right, let's run a benchmark. So this is 1080p. Uh, everything on high to ultra, except for motion blur. Motion blur is turned off and no ray tracing. Dang, okay. You're hovering around 70 FPS. So 70 FPS for, for this game is, ve is very good. The game's not optimized well, it really isn't. Obviously, if we wanted to increase the resolution, we'd have to turn down the settings, but that's okay. I mean, I don't think this game looks good on ultra anyway. I'd probably play it on medium. 
1440p on medium would probably be okay. This is 1080p ultra, no ray tracing, and everything is looking very good, very playable. I mean, it's the best, as good as you can get for this kind of hardware. I wanna try it with ray tracing, because this is a ray tracing computer. It technically has ray tracing, and ray tracing is very intensive. It really is. All right, back, back to settings. I'm gonna do ray tracing low. Ray tracing low, let's give it a shot. Now what ray tracing low does is that doesn't necessarily mean it's everything is low settings and then just ray tracing on. You can see the texture quality is actually on high. So it kind of finds a good middle ground because it knows ray tracing is very intensive. So low doesn't necessarily mean everything's on low. Guys, look at that. The FPS is exactly the same. So I don't know if you have this and you want to experience some ray tracing. I mean, I think, I think, uh, Playing at 1080p with ray tracing low might be the same because look, you can definitely tell a difference. Like the texture quality is the same because instead of on ultra, it's high, which, you know, it's not that much of a difference, but you get the ray tracing turned on and this is looking, I, this looks better to me. I think all those glowing lights and everything, like everything looks really, really good. It, actually the FPS is higher. Uh, I don't think we ever hit 80 on the other one. Look, we're at 83, 93. This is actually doing better than everything on ultra with ray tracing off. So. This might be the way to play it. Um, it just goes to show that playing on ultra is uh, pretty stupid for most people. Like, there's so many diminishing returns that you don't you don't get to experience the full benefit of your card. I think playing with ray tracing on or even a high resolution with DLSS will look really good. It's just unbelievable that at this price range, we're able to get ray tracing on a game this new that looks really good. And even the minimum FPS is way better. The minimum FPS before was like 32, now it's at 52. So this this might be the best way to play this game. Ray tracing low, motion blur turned off, 1080p. Uh, it looked better than Ultra with no ray tracing. So maxing out the graphics isn't necessarily the best thing to do for every game. Like sure, it's fun to do it, but you're gonna lose frames, you're gonna lose resolution. Like you gotta find a happy medium ground for what you're playing with. I mean, this is pretty much as good of a computer as you can get for $500. I, I don't think there's any pre-built right now in 2022 that can beat this. Okay, so this PC is a certified banger. But what was the point of this video? Was this just a way for me to flex on everyone and prove what a great deal hunter I am? Well, kind of. But the real reason I did this was to give you, my wonderful viewers, a good idea of what deal hunting for a PC could look like. Sure, the discounts I got probably won't come again. But if you're flexible, willing to be patient, and you do your research, you can get some amazing bargains yourself, first off. You need to subscribe to Reddit's r slash build a PC sales. They even have a Discord server that will ping you anytime someone posts on the subreddit. Some deals are only up for about 30 minutes, so you have to be fast and deal with some annoying notifications to get the best discounts. You can also check out Slick Deals, where people post some really amazing deals all year round. And it's not just for electronics, people post all kinds of things. And no, this video isn't sponsored by Slick Deals or Micro Center or anything. But hey, Micro Center, if you want to collaborate, hit me up, cuh. I'm just a big fan of these resources and love sharing them with you. If you want to see a PC you actually can replicate at this price point, check out this video here where I built a PC for $450 without using any insane deals. Thanks for watching, get subscribed.